Hey friends, welcome back to Adobe's YouTube channel. My name is Jess Goldsmith with episode five of eight and mastering typography and text-based design in Adobe Illustrator. I've been an illustrator and lettering artist for about a decade and now I'm taking my knowledge and bringing it straight to your screens. Today, I'm going to teach you how to create editable, non-destructive text effects in Adobe Illustrator. If you'd like, you can follow along by downloading the working file via the link in the description of this video. Before we begin, when I say editable and non-destructive text effects, what I mean is that your text is live the entire time you are working through your process. So you can change your font and you can change what your text says at any point. Compared to other and more destructive workflows that we learned in previous episodes, there is still so much that you can do to create beautiful text effects just using the appearance panel. Let's get started. Episode five, creating editable non-destructive text effects in the appearance panel. The artboard size will make a difference on how your effects come out. So I suggest using the same size artboard that I am at 9 by 16 inches. I prefer to use inches on my files and you can convert this to whatever measurement you prefer. The first thing we're going to need to do is to add some swatches to your panel. You can do this by dragging filled color to the swatches panel or by clicking new swatch inside of the swatches panel and adding your color value. You'll need black, white, and six other colors. The colors that I'm using are purposefully high contrast so it's easier to follow along. If you're not using the downloaded working file, you can copy them here. Go ahead and add some text and bump up the size. As always, I'm using the word create and using the font Cooper Black Italic. Now we're going to use the appearance panel. If it isn't already on your workspace, you can find it under Windows Appearance. This little circle symbol is what it looks like on your right side panel. With your text selected, hit the New Fill button or select New Fill in the top right drop down menu and use the bright yellow color. Duplicate the bright yellow fill and change the color to black from your swatches panel. Go to the effects menu and select path, offset path. Again, these pixel settings will depend on your artboard size. Mine is set at 0.05 inches. You can adjust this number to change the thickness of your offset path that's now acting as your border. Back to the effects panel, select distort and transform and go to transform. I'm changing my move settings to 0.03 inches, both vertically and horizontally, and creating eight copies to make this drop shadow. Then duplicate that fill and change the color to the purple swatch. Go to the effects menu and select path, offset path, and change it to 0.15 inches. Make a duplicate of the purple swatch and change the color to black. Expand the layer menu and adjust the offset number a little higher. Mine is at 0.2. With that, we've created another outline with the offset tool. Duplicate your purple fill and drag it below the new black layer. Change that color to pink. Expand the menu and double click transform effects. Change the number of copies to 16. Duplicate that pink layer, change the color to black and edit the offset to 0.2. What we're doing here is using the already made layers and settings to increase the number of copies and the size of the offset to allow the lower layers to come out from behind the top layers. You can repeat this step as many times as you want, but I'm going to add just one more and change it to blue. And I'm going to repeat the step that allows me to have another black border. I like to close all of my settings before heading to the next step. We're going to now add a new fill. It'll automatically be added at the top, so just grab it and drag it all the way down to the bottom layer. Change the color to your darker blue. We will be changing this to white later on, but we need to be able to see it on this white background. Go to Effects, Path, Offset Path, and change the settings to 0.3. Hit OK, go back to the FX panel, Transform, and change the move settings to 0.023, both horizontally and vertically. Change the copy settings to 32. Duplicate that layer, change it to black, and adjust the offset to 0.32. Go to Effects, Stylize, Drop Shadow. Set the drop shadow opacity to 40% on Multiply, the X and Y offsets at 0.125, and the blur at 1. Now go back to the darker blue layer and change it to white. Remember, this text is fully editable, so you can change the font or what the text says at any time. Let's take it up a notch. First, I'm going to add a solid color background behind the text. We're going to create a really simple pattern by using the star tool. Make a little starburst or a star and drag it to the swatches panel. Double click on that swatch and you'll see that it's turned into a pattern. 
select the starburst, change the color to white, and click done at the top left corner of your screen. You can always go back in and adjust the sizing. Select your text and open the appearance panel. Add a fill and keep it at the top. Select the starburst pattern. Nice. Remember, you can edit this pattern at any point. Now go to Effects, Path, Offset Path, and change the settings to negative 0.04. Go to Transform and change the horizontal move setting to 0.028. Duplicate the pattern layer and change the fill to the bright yellow color. Now go to the original yellow layer below and change it to the green color you have in your swatches. Now you have some extra dimension with an inner shadow. You can always change your colors, your patterns, and the amount of layers in your appearance panel. Lastly, and probably the most fun, you can apply your warp and distort settings all while keeping your text editable. Check out how I make this piece look completely different using the warp tools and all of the other appearance edits we just learned. That's all for today. I hope you learned something new that you can now apply to your workflow. My name is Jess Goldsmith. You can find me at Chick of All Trade or at Women of Type. And don't forget to subscribe to Adobe's YouTube channel. I'm so glad that you're here and I can't wait to see you on the next one.